Does red light therapy actually speed up muscle recovery? Athletes swear by it, and a new study suggests it can make a difference, but not in the way most people think. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. In this video, I'll explain how red light therapy and lasers are supposed to work, break down the findings from a new meta-analysis, and share my thoughts on whether this treatment is truly worth the investment. So let's first ask the question, how is red light therapy supposed to work? The scientific name for this is photobiomodulation, and it can be delivered either by low-level lasers or by LED panels. When specific wavelengths of red or near-infrared light penetrate your skin, the energy is absorbed by the mitochondria inside your muscle cells. You can think of mitochondria as the batteries of your cells. They're responsible for making ATP, which is your body's energy currency. By stimulating these mitochondria, red light therapy is thought to boost ATP production, reduce oxidative stress, and promote better cellular repair. But what does the science actually say? A new meta-analysis published in 2025 pulled together data from 14 randomized controlled trials looking at red light therapy in high-level soccer and volleyball players. These were professional athletes, not weekend warriors, so the research was designed to test recovery in people training and competing at very high levels. The researchers focused on three main outcomes, muscle strength, muscle endurance, and markers of muscle damage. When they measured maximum voluntary contraction, the amount of force an athlete can generate, red light therapy didn't make too much of a difference. In other words, it didn't actually make athletes stronger. But where things looked more promising was endurance. Volleyball players who used red light therapy before exercise were able to complete more repetitions before fatigue set in, and this suggests it can help delay muscle fatigue. For soccer players, the results were more mixed on whether red light therapy actually improved muscle endurance. And when it came to creatine kinase, or CK, this is a marker of muscle damage, soccer players who received red light therapy had significantly lower levels after training or games, and this points to less muscle breakdown after red light therapy. Volleyball players showed smaller changes here. So what does this all mean? First, don't expect red light therapy to suddenly make you stronger. The evidence just isn't there for building muscle or increasing raw power. But if your goal is to recover a little faster, reduce soreness, or push through a few extra reps, the research suggests that there may be some benefit, especially for endurance and possibly for reducing muscle damage after intense exercise. But with that said, the results aren't consistent across every sport or outcome. Volleyball players seemed to benefit more when it came to muscle endurance, while soccer players showed clear improvements in lowering muscle damage markers. It's also worth noting that the overall quality of evidence for these findings was rated as low, so we can't treat the results as definitive. My take on this is if you have the budget and enjoy experimenting, red light therapy can be a useful recovery tool. I work with both high-level athletes and weekend warriors who swear by their devices and feel they make a difference. But if you're deciding where to invest your time and your money, the fundamentals, good sleep, solid nutrition, and smart training are still the recovery strategies that deliver the biggest payoff. And here's the thing, what people don't realize is that small issues with sleep quality can dramatically hold back recovery. So check out this video where I break down why sleep is the most powerful recovery tool we have and the simple strategies you can use to start sleeping deeper and performing better than ever.